following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back. I am the Zigzag Man, and you are Comfortably Zoned. And I'm in Alameda, California, right across the bay from San Francisco, across the moat from Oakland. And... um I am so happy. We have almost a reunion. You can call it that. Um, As everyone knows, I advertise talking to the the most interesting people on the planet. Today is no exception. Uh, She's been away from the microphone for a while. Uh, Please help me welcome back Nancy Finley. How are you? Hi. Great. And so happy to be here, especially right at this time of year, right after the All Star. Things are oh, heating yeah. up. Yeah, it, uh, we're gonna gonna get Jerry Feidelberg to join us in a little bit, and um, we're gonna talk about the the season so far for the A's, and uh, what you think, Nancy, is gonna happen for the rest of the season, baseball wise. I think they're uh, going to follow. They're following the same path as last year. They're going to okay. um, go up, keep going up. And uh, this is this is a really, from what I remember, this is a stressful time because you know how close you are or you're not. <laughs> and it's, right. um, yes, yes, it's oh, not it's like that. Oh, it's trading deadline coming up. Oh. Um, this yep. Jerry. Hey, Jerry Feidelberg joins us. Jerry, Nancy Finley is here. Hi. Hi, Jerry. Well, hi. How are you, <laughs> Nancy? How's oh. everything? Great, great. I was saying I missed hearing your voice. <laughs> well, talk to Ralph about that. <laughs> yeah, well, how are you feeling, Jerry? Everything okay? I'm going I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. I'll have it checked out. It's not okay. Uh, uh, I, I got oh, hit with a double. Me... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got hit with a double whammy last week. I had a urinary tract infection. And then after I got through the emergency room, I got home. Something else went wrong. It got uh-huh. better for a couple of days. I, I relapsed yesterday. So today I'm okay. But I want to have the doctor check it out. It's a gastroenterological GI problem, gastroenterological problem. Oh, oh Jerry, Jerry, I hope mm. everything turns out okay. Yeah, um, so too. yes. When is your doctor tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to see the doctor tomorrow. Well, you know, okay. they'll, they'll check it out and see what they can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I feel okay. I don't feel great. <clears throat> I was supposed to go. I'm, I'm going to do the ball game, write the ball game summary tonight, but I'll do it at home. I'm not going to go to the park until I get until I get better. So you're so dedicated. <laughs> well, I like writing. I like writing new stories. I would say your predictions have happened again. Yeah, the A's I mean, are doing pretty well. The A's are doing mm-hmm. pretty well. I, mm-hmm. I didn't think they were going to be as good as last year. But they had they had a little luck with uh, Frankie Montas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, he was what nine and two when he when he was suspended for eighty games. That was a huge loss, and they happened. What was that for? What was that for? He that was used for an drugs. illegal substance. Yeah, he used an illegal oh. substance. Mm-hmm. They made a trade for Homer Bailey. Uh, Bailey <clears throat> broke in nicely with the Reds, did okay. Mm-hmm. But it's been just been so-so the last few years. And uh, well, he, he was doing okay with the uh, Royals when they made the trade. And I don't think it cost them very much money or it just cost them a prospect. Mm-hmm. So, uh, why do you think this happens, with... though? Jerry, why do you think this <laughs> happens when they know they, they will get caught? I mean, why do they risk it? I have no idea. Oh, I guess they figure they're not going to get caught. Well, the, the overwhelming um, number of them don't get caught, 
And oh. it's a cultural thing in baseball. It isn't like um, uh, PEDs have gone away. Mm-hmm. Um, there are always two or three guys a year being busted. And it's a question of whose chemist can stay ahead of um, the other person's chemist. In this case, the individual player versus the system of testing. And oh, my. We don't want to think up. players are doing that at all now. Just stop it. No, they still are. They still are. Mm. They'll do anything to gain an edge. They know how difficult it is to get there, to get to be a, become a big league player. They know that there are 10 guys waiting in line mm-hmm. to take their place. So they'll do what mm. they think is necessary, and they'll, mm-hmm. they'll risk getting getting caught. So many of them don't get caught, but those that do, mm-hmm. uh, in the case of Montas, it really hurts the team. And mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he's just, he, he, he'll come back late in the season, but he's ineligible for the postseason. So his season, for all mm. intents and purposes, is over. Mm. Now, on the positive side, the A's have had three pitchers that have absolutely done a super job for them all season. Uh, Chris Bassett, who was the losing mm-hmm. pitcher yesterday, has given the A's five and six innings uh, almost every every start, and he's kept them in the ball games. <clears throat> and that was a big improvement for Bassett. <clears throat> excuse me, because um, he's been injured over the years and had problems. But it looks like he's on track to have his best year in the major leagues. Uh, Brett Anderson, often mm-hmm. and- uh, offered in- injured, but Brett has won nine and lost five. He gives the A's six and seven innings, and he's been mm-hmm. very, very consistent. Nothing to nothing to say bad about him. And of course, mm-hmm. Mike Fire. He's, he's Mike. always been a terrific pitcher when healthy. I yeah. hear a lot about him. Oh, yeah. yeah, I hear a lot about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, uh, Anderson doesn't throw very hard. I think his and, and he goes ninety miles an hour is his top speed, but he moves the ball around and he had, and and he, as long as you can keep the hitters off balance, it doesn't matter how hard you're throwing. That's so right. That's been a big factor. And Mike Byers. Mike Byers has been outstanding. He got off to a slow start, but he has been very, very good. I was there the night he pitched his no-hitter. It was exciting. <clears throat> he did it against the Reds, and he was very, very good. He, the other night he was pitching, he was he gave up two runs, and uh, I think the A's scored th- three. He was going up against Wade Miley. The A's scored three in the ninth, and so he didn't get a decision. But he pitched well enough to win. You give up two runs in seven innings, you've done your job. You did a super job. So Mm -hmm. those guys are keeping the A's in it. There was a lot of concern. Uh, There's concern about the bullpen because uh, Blake Trinan has not been the pitcher that he was last year. He's had command issues all season long. And uh, apparently uh, the book on him was to – uh, and when he came in in the ninth inning, is to uh, take pitches uh, mm-hmm. because he had trouble finding the strike zone. So he could get behind two or nothing or three and zero, oh, and then he'd either walk the batter or give up, come in with a fastball and they hit it. So Blake's been working on that to correct that deficiency. But the A's were fortunate that uh, Liam Hendricks has done a good job for them. Joaquin Soria has been better mm-hmm. at doing a job for him. And Yusmero Petit has been outstanding all year long. Lou Trevino, on, on the other hand, uh, started okay. But he, he's been getting racked pretty easily lately. So they're concerned mm. about him. But okay. the, overall, overall, they have a very good bullpen. So. And they have a, a terrific center fielder, Loriano. They Simeon has developed into a solid shortstop. I'm wondering about Profar. How has he turned out? Profar is Profar is batting average isn't too good, but he I think he's got 14 home runs and he's got a lot of pop in his bat, and mm. he's been playing well. Although the A's have been playing Franklin Barreto. 
uh, probably they're showcasing him because they may be interested in trading either him or uh, Profar. Who knows? When is the deadline? July 31st. In about six days. Coming right up. We'll see what happens. Coming up. Yeah. Who is making the personnel decision on the A's now? Is, Is Billy Bean overseeing it? Is he making the final decision? Uh, yeah, I think he, I think he still does. David Forrest has his team. You know, they have the sabermetric guys, and then they and and then um, I guess um, if they want to move a player, they got to go through Billy or go see what see what he says about it. I think that's what they're doing right now. So it's a joint effort. Okay. It's always going to be it's always going to be Beans Club in that regard. Now I will ask you both: Have uh, has anything changed on the ballpark situation? Oh, oh great question! Yeah, great question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, um, the the city of Oakland is now doing a study or requiring the A's to give them information how they're going to get people to and from the stadium. Uh, you're going to have 35, if they get 35,000 people into the stadium, the only thing that they have proposed is this gondola, which will it can shuttle 6,000 people an hour to and from the stadium. And if you've got 24,000 people, it'll take you four hours to shuttle the people in and four hours out. So that doesn't sound like it's too too good a deal. But they have to figure out what they're going to do are they going to build additional parking? Uh, how, how are they oh, going to handle yeah. traffic in the streets? There's a lot, lot involved. We and know the stadium will be smaller. Yep, they always yeah. are now. Yep. Yeah, and this, but the city well, is not the city smaller, is more to, intimate coming mm-hmm. in. Yeah. You know, um, the city is the city's willing to go go for the for the stadium, but they have to have answers. How are they going to get people in and out of the park? And so far, what they have proposed is not sufficient. So they're working on it. I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're they're scratching their heads trying to figure out what they can do. Have they and approached Caltrans? Know, Caltrans for another free for another exit? No. Or no, no, I don't think I don't. Well, I don't think Amtrak's going to do anything either. The train tracks are right there. Mm, yes, you know, yes. I I would think yeah, I would think Caltrans might be able to assist if they you know maybe ask yeah, maybe. yeah. okay or, or yeah go. Point is they have no foes in city government at this point. I don't um, think so. I, I I I but I think they have a legitimate question. How are you going to get people from, to and from the Bart Station? Are you going to have extend? Uh, you know, build a bar extension, or you're going to have shuttle buses. What are you going to do to keep get get the people out to and from the ballpark? Mm-hmm. Because it's what not did the Giants? Right now. Yeah. Well, what did the Giants do? They bought. They got that. Um, that used to be a shipyard, right? Or a warehouse. I don't what, whatever yeah, it was. was. A... China Basin. Yeah, it was a great location. Mm-hmm. Right, great location, so, and uh, Amtrak. Uh, the Amtrak station was at Fourth and King, and the uh, and Muni ran down Third. It was perfect, right from. Didn't right they down rearrange? The didn't they have to rearrange the freeway on and off ramps for no, that? No, no, I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. No, but they Worked built up. Well. They, they built up the entire area as a result. A new ballpark rejuvenizes a city in a way that um, a lot of people aren't, aren't aware of. It takes a long, took the Giants a long time to put it together, but mm-hmm. uh, look at their success. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. It's you comp- it's a different comparison because they put in the beautiful apartments in the area. You're not going to put apartments in in at Howard Terminal. It's still you got ships coming in there. You got the guys working. You got snits of steel grinding, working and grinding the steel down at night. It would. I don't. Think it would stay like that. Mhm. Uh, who knows? Mhm. They're only they're only looking at that small parcel. 
So and they, and they still have problems with the with the maritime union that are complaining that the lights from the ballpark might might cause the pilots or whatever coming in with the ships. They might get in, the lights might uh, cause distractions. Well, so, I think that could be. I think some kind of amendment could be made for that. They're saying might cause, but you don't yeah. know a lot. They don't know happen. for sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, hey, Nancy, let's talk about you yes. a little bit. How are things going? Morgan is well, I'm sure. Yes, he is. I'm keeping him well. And <laughs> just, okay. Yes, yes. It, yeah. it's, uh, you know, this is a long – Morgan has what the coach of the Warriors was diagnosed with. I don't remember the exact name, but it had to do with uh, spinal cord leak. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, it, yeah, it's Jerry. I don't remember the name, but it. Oh, many times they say you have to have surgery to really correct it. So Morgan's trying to go as long as he can without surgery, and it seems to get better slowly over time, but he has to watch his balance because some days it, he can feel his balance off, but then other days he just it's just more normal. Oh, yeah. Good. So take Steve well, Kerr. Wish, wish him our best for uh, yeah, speedy recovery. Yeah, absolutely. And Steve they Kerr, Kerr. Into the, the IL. They don't even call it the DL yeah. anymore. It's the IL. Uh, oh. Jerry, yeah. I'm more, um, concerned about you. And now Morgan is down. Um, another member of the um, Comfortably Zone family who did mm-hmm. a lot of our. Um, our A shows, Patrick Tracy has had a bad back for some time. Wow. And mm. he, he's recuperating. So um, something about uh, um, mm-hmm. something about nothing. It's just coincidence. Well, whenever I remember was, that. Well, whenever my dad took me, dad took me shopping a lot, but, but mm-hmm. not long because his back would always start to hurt. <laughs> Mm. It was uh, always, I have a backache, now we have to go. So I remember a that. psychosomatic. Uh, <laughs> Lower back. No, it, yes. it, it, it worked, right, it worked beautifully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Whatever it was. And I'm sure you weren't hurting for anything um, shopping-wise. You oh, no, shopping. it was always, it was always during the halftime for football, that's when, <laughs> also, when Dad would take it, so I was very limited on how long I could take. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, Dad always wanted to do stuff for me, but then he wanted to listen to that football game too. He had to be back for that. Um, hey Nancy, we talked about this before. Do you have a follow? Yeah. You have a? It's yeah. in your mind. Do you have anything concrete on a follow-up book to your? Oh, um, oh yes. Great book, Finley Ball. Oh yes. About uh, your dad, Carl Finley, um, Charlie Finley, naturally, and oh, yes. the Oakland A's. Anything? I I have all that. Well, I have all that saved on uh, the computer because my entire manuscript was huge. It was 175,000 words, I believe, and the publisher could only use 90 to 95 words so okay. what i what i had written was was set aside and uh just waiting for a follow-up and in the meantime i even added i've gone through and found found additional information ah, may i ask what you are going to name the second offering oh gosh that's a good question um you know very good question. My first, the title I had was changed by my publisher, um, and I'm wondering if I should keep this title or change it. So, if you have any suggestions or in one of the audience, let me know. Okay. Uh, Very good question. We'll how about that out fin- there too. How about Finley Ball lives on. Oh, I like that. I like that. Like that too. Yeah. Um, it's Star Wars like 
and beyond, but that's used too much. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, um, well, one thing I notice if when I, was, when I went to books, I always went to a table of contents, and unfortunately, some books don't have a table of contents, but the ones that did, I would always look to see if 80 or 81 to 85 was mentioned, and it's like that was just a void. Not, they would skip those years, or they would talk about maybe up to the end of 80, and then go to 85 when Larissa's is higher. And I uh, really so you're going to fill in I, the gaps. Oh uh, my God! Yeah. Yes. Oh Jesus. my God! Just a little bit. Just a little ball bit. Era. What I don't understand is writers who really research can find more out than they do. That 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 era should stay vacant. Mm-hmm. Just just look at an no. old yearbook. You know, just well. Sure. What are some of the things that you will be including in? that um, part of, of Finley Bill? Well, there was another incident that happened like Tanner, but uh, so that we, will be in You was, know, it's time. He's been dead long enough. We've teased the folks. You have a story <laughs> about uh, Mr. Tanner. Um, why don't you relate that? It's kind of cute. Oh, I don't like that. I don't think it's cute. I didn't think it was no. a cute story. Well, oh, the, it's, um, it's gross. Cute, um, right. Cute's the wrong word, but it's telling. I mean, yeah, it's the, just, me, uh, the Me yeah. Too movement would be absolutely astounded at, at that statement. Come on. You know what? They haven't world. picked up on that. Yeah. I'm surprised no one's picked up on that. I mean, it's a sports. Well, um,. It would be pretty hard for them to pick up on it without your assistance. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But you know what? I I handled it. I think I handled it the right way. No one knows the right way. There isn't a book on it. But I was under 18 and um, knew the personality of Dad and Charlie, so I, I thought I handled it the right way. Um, but at the same time, it didn't. It did not affect me. How do I say? Um, man, I didn't have to see anyone about it and talk about it. It, I thought it was humorous at the time, and but yet disgusting. I was shocked this woman would dare to try that. Um, it was just so unexpected. I guess when you put a, I guess. They thought they were introducing me to the business world, which mm. and dad made dad made sure I wore suits, not dresses, so I didn't have a provocative dress on or anything, nothing low cut uh, so you can't say I was doing that um did you tell him of the of the instance no, no <laughs> uh-uh. okay. Not at all. I act. In fact, I think it, I, I'm surprised that when a hand went on my thigh under the booth, that I didn't jump. Okay. Was it? Would you consider that like um, a sign at the times? Was it prevalent? Did you have other women friends in the industry that experienced stuff like that? Well, I'm sure they did. I didn't. Um, the I didn't know that many women in in our group. Well, I have to say though, some of the women were flirty with dad. So I really, and they were over eighteen. So I. Well, that's nice to know that. Uh, yeah, my, my, my situation was different. Uh, I don't talking to daughters. I. I don't know if they would have even confided that out of fear that I might say something. Um, now, later on, I've heard from daughters of players, but their situation is different from mine, where they feel like their dad abandoned them for another wife um, who kept them from his former family type of thing, whereas with me, I stayed with my dad, and I don't have issues about my dad's love. I know it was there. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking it's more different. specifically about how women were treated in uh, yeah, the industry I mean, of baseball. And I would like to know, have things changed for, from those days the way you see it now? Well, the way I see it now, I heard about a woman who wrote a book, and she went to, I think it was a player's hotel or a fellow, well, an announcer maybe, and she said he came on to her. Um, But I look at that and think, I really don't know the circumstances. Um, Yeah, well, things things like that are bound to happen on individu- in individual cases mm-hmm. and what have you. Yeah. I'm yes. just curious now, to know how prevalent it, it is and um we didn't have, have any better. We didn't have any complaints back I mean um I didn't hear of that back then. Maybe people didn't talk about it but yet I was in a position where a lot of men were afraid of dad and charlie they were scared so um that no one unfortunately i didn't have a lot of people ask me out on dates because of that so that made it even more shocking that tanner would try what he did but now nowadays i just think that with people watching everything you do that it's probably better yeah, right. cell phones make it. Cell phone cameras have made a difference in this world. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Everything and re- recording Every- devices Everything. and what have you and. Um, that's right. Sure. It's a different world. Well, and people are much more aware. And people are much more aware. And, and I would like to think that young men, well, they, you know, they, they have their biological urges that they are they are better in tune. And maybe clubs. Some clubs uh, talk to them about what to do uh, when they're on the road, particularly when they're on the road and they're vulnerable and there there are uh, people hanging around the the hotels where the where the age stays. Or, well, not only the age, oh. but all the clubs stay. Yeah, and these oh, guys yes. can get compromised. And they That's can get right. Into compromising Good. situations. That's right. Actually, you reminded me. Uh, there's that airplane incident. Wait, I mean. I was so young, but the one in 87 that caused um, Hawk Harrelson to be fired. Oh, uh, Hawk got himself in trouble. But on the other hand, they were, I don't know, they were really young. Um, I don't know. You figure that probably happens on other flights because Charlie announced there wouldn't be any more alcohol consumption after that. And, People believed him. He was just angry about what happened. He wasn't a teetotaler. Mm-hmm. No, and, so, and, and, I, I, and I don't even, I, I don't recall, I know that the players have beer after the game, but I don't recall ever seeing, in all the time I've been with the A's, anyone having a beer mm-hmm. in the clubhouse. Mostly it's a soda or water, whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. not. It, yeah, it's just, yeah. A, it's just a yeah. Bit different atmosphere today. The players well, relate yes. differently. Well, Charlie didn't even like to drink until after games because he wanted to be clear-headed. He didn't want to be foggy. And uh, he didn't want his guys to do that. But, you know, back then in the late 60s, it was like Mad Men. And they had drinks on the plane, from what I hear. Uh-huh. Yeah, and well, less probably they, not. Yeah. This, they weren't going to a game though. They, they were relaxed. They were in a relaxed atmosphere, so it must have been after a game. Mm-hmm. But, well, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know why Hawk got it, but um, Str- Kraus didn't. Hey, let's skip the subject a little bit okay. and talk a little life, as Jerry and I have been doing from time to time. Um, it is the day after Mr. Mueller made his report. Um, mm-hmm. kind of talked about it, if you would, or had other people talk about it. Um, what do you think this means to the, the impeachment effort? Was his, um, was his uh, performance, as it were, could have it wrecked the entire, uh, entire process? Are they just not going to get up enough support 
to make a change in in what's ha- what's happening. Um, well, Jerry, he, just um, off, be ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead, Nancy. Speaking of Paul, just quickly, J. Paul Stevens was legal counsel for the team in the early '60s, Kansas City, and oh, Dad just, Dad kept in yeah, Dad kept in touch with him. Charlie did, but Dad did throughout. Um, the years and when I was in high school dad gave me a letter from him and said show this to your history teacher and I did not see the importance of it I remember thinking oh what why but um, later I did and I know that they were friends with him but I never knew what his political affiliation was Um, someone told me recently it was Republican but he like he really mellowed so speaking of that things have you know yeah, people he, i mean oh. yeah but he he was he, he was a liberal voice on the court he i did see the, i never uh, knew that with the liberal, yeah uh, he, i know uh, that he looked, yeah. at, he looked at the law i know that if, we'll, if dad and well if dad and charlie liked someone um they wouldn't they didn't start they didn't take politics or um, let that affect the relationship, but I figured he must have been Republican at some time. So he was. He was, apparently. But Oh, absolutely. You know, he, and he claimed that it wasn't he that changed. It was the country that changed. Interesting. Very interesting. So um, Republicans then seem mellow. I mean, if you look so, at it then, they seem yeah. Democrat now. The guys like uh, Rockefeller and Jake Javits from New York, they were mm-hmm. known as liberal liberal Republicans. They couldn't exist in the Republican Party today. They now were I look at it. Wow, I just yeah. don't know what. It's a, like a whole other party. But with Mueller, I think I was hoping that they didn't catch him off guard or, or make him look flustered. Oh, no. uh, who knew that he was... Um, in this state, I was expecting a, vibr- a vibrant man who yes. wanted to have his life work at least mm-hmm. uh, be interpreted fairly, mm-hmm. and he was unable to do it. It was like uh, mm-hmm. we come to realize that it, there has to be a guy that says, you do this, you do that, you do the other thing, mm-hmm. and compiles it all, he had very, very little to do with interviewing. Um, It was kind of uh, disappointing to me. Yes, Um, agreed. In in a sense it was. Yeah, he he used, you know, read it in the report. That's what I said. Okay, Mm -hmm. yes, no. He he did not expand on anything. He was hampered by the... (laughs) Yeah, he was hampered by the Office of Legal Counsel's opinion, and it's only an opinion. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you can't indict a sitting president. And someone mm-hmm. posed the question, if the sitting president went out and murdered the vice president, are you going to have him sit in the presidency office for the next three years while he's already killed a person? Mm-hmm. You know, so right. he's connected. Well, in this yeah, case, he just killed the spirit of the country. I wonder how long he'll be able to get get away from uh, yeah. get away or get away with as, uh, all of that. As uh, for what the is, in, yeah. impeachment, I don't. I don't think it'd be wise. They they could, if they had enough momentum, they could start an impeachment inquiry and and get it going. That that is. To, should we here is here's what we have to do to get to take it to Congress to get an, a, an impeachment vote. They may want to they might want to do that, but if there's not not enough support, and Nancy Pelosi is certainly not supportive, no. she feels that even if you could impeach him, it's going to go to the Senate. The Republicans control the Senate. Not going they're not going to get a conviction. We've had yeah. two presidents. Well, Pelosi impeached. is coming much closer to uh, impeaching Bush and Cheney these days. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit late for that. 
a little bit late. Um, so, but can you, if you had a crystal ball as you do in baseball, your uh, Jerry, what would you predict that the end game will be for Donald J. Trump? Well, I think it's going to go to to an election. Uh, he's not going to get impeached, and um, because he'd love to say the fact that he was acquitted, and uh, Nancy does not want to give him that opportunity, so that's why she doesn't want to have the impeachment hearings. But uh, I think that uh, if the people, you know, his his support and his base has remained constant around 43, 44, 45 percent, somewhere in there. The Democrats have got. They know that they're going to going to do well on the West Coast, the Northeast, but they need Michigan, they need Pennsylvania, they need Wisconsin, and they have to do, and they have to make sure that they get some some wins from the states that are, uh, you know, neither Republican nor Democratic, but they have to get the uh, independent votes in those states. And, you know, a lot of people are, are fed up with his antics and all the well, nonsense Puerto, that's going on. If you think yeah. of Puerto Rico now, you wonder, did did Trump know something about that leader that, you know, he, he didn't feel like he could put out? But now with these leaks, people, the people are finding out that he was corrupt and he was using money um, given to him by other countries. So when Trump huh. said... He didn't want to give them money after the hurricane. And that, um, yep, that could go for him. Yeah, unfor- yeah unfortunately, the, you know, the country, the, the leadership was corrupt. And, and yep. the, that's what happens is that the, the money gets siphoned off and it doesn't get to, get to uh, fix the people. They, they needed electricity. The, one woman told the story. Oh, yeah. The electricity oh. went out. Her mother was on a respirator, and um, they couldn't get the generator going. And by the time they got, got it going, she had passed away. Mm. I, yeah, so see, this makes it Trump's, Trump could use that in his uh, election. Well, I don't know. You, you know, they did uh, not. No. They, they, there's <laughs> enough scandals there. They had they had some company coming in who had you know had very small electrical business and they got the contract to do it in oh Puerto yeah Rico. i remember and that, that. Was a scandal yeah and the, the mm-hmm. people have been suffering for a couple of years you know trump so they're just taking advantage of them. each other yeah 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 it was about three thousand people that lost their lives in the hurricane the place isn't rebuilt the people are still suffering and they are american citizens they do vote and uh we'll see uh, yeah. I would hope, I would hope that people would look at uh, people are going to look at Trump and they're going to say, "Oh, we he had tax reform. We got a great economy." Well, we had a great economy mm-hmm. when he came into office. So far, he hasn't screwed it up. You know, we haven't had a recession. So we'll mm-hmm. we'll see what happens there. Uh, the the Democrats need someone who can who's going to, who has the ability to go to toe to toe with this guy, who can take him on. And right. I don't know who that if, is. If a great they, economy means a three trillion dollar deficit, deficit, is it really a great economy, or you're just playing with monopoly money? Yeah, well, that's the thing. The tax, the tax reform that gave a tremendous amount of money to the top one percent, or one tenth of one percent of the mm-hmm. people, is costing the, costing the country a fortune. And, right, and uh, when they I mean, say this full apl- employment. What are people employed? What type of jobs do people have? Good old fashioned yeah, more, yeah. jobs yeah. where you could make an, uh, a decent wage to support your family, buy a house, this, that, and the other thing. You can't do I'd, that anymore. Yeah. Morgan and, said this reminds him of 2005, where we are now. Yeah, it could be yes. a couple of years before the big, the big uh, recession. You got to look at look at. Um, the numbers that just came out on homelessness in San Francisco and Oakland oh. up fifty percent, forty seven percent. If oh uh, when you got off when you got off at High Street there used to be a little paint store there. Well that's mm-hmm. long knocked down. 
and they have a they have a Home Depot. A Home Depot probably employs what three hundred people, something like that. Uh, they have homeless encampments right there, and the people they've had to hire security guards because it's about people the twenty-four hour out. fitness. Am I correct? By twenty, exactly. They had their cars being broken into. The merchandise is getting stolen out of the out of the Home Depot, and they're threatening to take that Home Depot and leave Oakland. Oakland can't afford to lose 300 jobs, but this is the cost. And then, it reminds uh, wow. Yeah. I have a question yeah. for Jerry. I have a question for Jerry. Think, I'm thinking back of London before they had, um, well, I heard they're, I've heard they're the ones who started the um, great water, clean water system. And wasn't that because people were living like they do now in the homeless encampment? I mean, couldn't this lead to disease if they don't have adequate? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And there are senators and congresspeople that don't want to ensure and make sure that, um, that illegals have health care because they don't realize that if they get sick, they could spread germs and, and what have you. And everybody needs health care, and everybody needs affordable health care. You, you so, made a good point, Ralph. You made a good point. A mm-hmm. few years ago, uh, Highland Hospital, in, in, there was a significant amount of undocumented people here in, uh, in mm-hmm. the Bay Area. They had a tuberculosis outbreak and a, a little mini epidemic of tuberculosis. And tuberculosis doesn't know if you're legal, illegal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You're exposed yeah. to it. You're, it's a human health problem. The state of California uh, in the med, their Medicaid program has been fairly lenient in putting people mm-hmm. on, as far as I know, that uh, were you know undocumented to stop mm-hmm. that exact problem. And it, and it's, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But there are people there are people who get very upset with that, and they don't understand the ramifications of how, how disease diseases like tuberculosis, cholera, type that's poison, spread through the air, right? isn't it? Yeah. God. Yeah. Sure. Oh my. So hey, and if real there's one more point. thing I want to make sure, and um, when they're going to build a new ballpark, mm-hmm. I hope they make some provisions for not just the social class, the high social class to see a ball game, but I hope they make provisions where you could bring your kid uh, at least a couple of times a year. You could bring the family for a good family rate, old-fashioned, go to the ballpark and not have it cost you $200 for a family. Oh, like like first class? Yeah. (laughs) You know the A's, the A's are the A's got that uh, season access where you you get the you buy that you get in for ten dollars. You, you, they have good you, prices. You know, they yeah, have good compared prices to others. on all their stuff. Yeah, I mean they really make it family family friendly. So oh, I, I want to okay. I want to talk yeah. about this netting next time because I wa- I meant to bring this up, but you know my book I mentioned people getting hit in the face by baseballs and dad was protective of me that way. But there are pros and cons to that because they have waivers up the kazoo for people who buy tickets that there could be a danger. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Baseballs put in netting now um, way down the third baseline and, and that's changed. Uh, but, you know, a lot of it is people go, go to the ballpark, their heads are in the devices, they're not watching the game. And well, parents of little kids should be more aware if they take them to these areas where they're very exposed. Right. Oh, sure. No question. Oh, sure. So, All right, guys, so- this has been fun. Uh, like I said earlier, it's like a little mini reunion. Yes, <laughs> Nancy, Nancy Feidelberg, Nancy Feidelberg, no, no. Nancy, Nancy Jerry, Jerry Feidelberg. Um, <laughs> I I want to just implore you both to stay healthy till the next reunion. Oh yeah, you got it. Yes. 
All right. Yes, you do. And then and, um, um, I'll be back yeah. at you before you know it. It's the Comfortably Zone Network, and uh, this was fun for me, guys. Let's do it more often. Yes. Yes. You got a deal. Great. All right. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. You let us know okay. what's happening. Oh yeah. Well, I, I'm feeling better today. A little bit better today. So we'll see how what happens when I see the doc tomorrow. Hopefully okay. I can get through this and get back to controlling it. Uh, it it's a problem that occurred uh, due to treatment that I had 15 years ago. But that's a long story. And uh, let's talk about something else. Baseball makes mm-hmm. me feel better. Good. Yes. Uh, right now, uh, Right now I'm getting ready for um, Red Sox-Yankees on uh, MLB Network. So how bad can life be? Wow. Can't okay. be all that bad. Can't yeah, be all that bad. Go. Well, go right. Yankees. Okay. okay. <laughs> go us. <laughs> yes. Go us. <laughs> See you later. Bye. bye. Okay. Thanks bye for bye. listening, everybody. Comfortably Zone Network. I'm Ralph Tycho, the weak link of it all. Adios.